Hello, all. Jeff here with a new video. We've got another useless car challenge this time, and it is the Ford F-150 Trophy Truck. Let's see if it's any good in A-Class. So the first race I'm going to show you, VIR Grand West. And as you can see in front of me, another useless car, the Myers Manx. And start line, four or five cars have collided already. This is crazy. And I've gained another spot there. And there's a Falcon GDHO on my inside. But then he goes wide and so does an RX-7. It's all pandemonium here being in the wet. Being an off-road car, this kind of helps. Driving in the rain. And then you got a couple more off the track. Three, in fact. And then there's that lowest. So I'm like, nah, much lighter car. A lot of tight corners coming up. I'm like, Nah, go in front, mate. As we go further into the first lap, I'm right behind his Focus RS. I'm on for a podium here. I'm feeling good about myself. There's a car off the track there. And, yeah, we'll see what happens here. But I've been disconnected again. Why does this keep happening? It does my head in at times. Anyway, next race I'm going to show you. I did a couple more, and then I did, went to Yas Marina full. Second on the grid, I've got the Alan Moffat Mustang behind me as well, which is pretty cool. And I've taken the whole shot here. Turn one, and all of a sudden the AC Cobra, sorry, the Shelby Cobra just cuts the corner. Getting a fair bit of an advantage for himself there. But, yeah, and then we get to this tight corner, and it's just no good for a trophy truck. The Legacy goes past me, and then Alan Moffat passes me as well. For those who don't know who Alan Moffat is, he was... A legendary Australian touring car racer. Australian touring cars now being V8 supercars. That red Mustang was what he drove in the late 60s and early 70s and was a very iconic car in Australia. As you can see that guy is just trying to avoid the guy in the legacy from cutting corners but look everyone's doing it in this lobby but once one good thing about this trophy truck is it's very fast in a straight line. I've got a really good tune for it. However, it tops out tops out at about 250 kilometers an hour. So if you go into Le Mans without the chicanes, this thing's no good. As Moffat has gone wide here. Look, I'm in fourth place, but you just never know what's going to happen at Yas Marina. And we go to these um alternative back straight. And one big problem. I've ran out of batteries. The batteries have gone dead. May as well quit the race before I ram someone without even realising. Anyway, a couple of races later, different lobby. No, it was the same lobby. Hockenheim full. Three laps. With all wheel drive, I get a really good launch. Get around the M3 as we get into turn one. Get it nice and clean. I end up going a bit wide there. That was more of a carnage avoidance rather than being a noob. As we've got the Alan Moffat Mustang right behind me. And I've gone past the Camaro very easily, to be honest. And second place. So, we've got the Cobra in front again. And there's a fair bit going on behind me. However, not much happened to me for the rest of the race. As we go to lap three... It's rained. It stopped raining. However, the track is completely wet. Get a couple of wheels in the air. And all of a sudden, just watch this guy on the right. A Silver Lotus. Old mate. He was trying to ram people for about a good five races. And all of a sudden, old mate rams me. And gives me another nudge. Seriously, that's not on. At the end of this race, I went vote to kick. But guess what? He must have got kicked to because I didn't get the chance to kick him. We don't need people like this in Forza. So, what could have been second place, or maybe first depending on the rammer, I end up finishing seventh. Not ideal. The next day, I decided to do some more races, and this is what the lobby looked like for me. So, I did a couple races, and all of a sudden... Homestead Road, and I'm starting on pole with another useless car in second place, the Mercedes-Benz race truck. And, yeah, the truck hasn't got off to a good start, and I'm in first place. 
Now I'm going to show you the whole race here because this was um, a very good contest. Get a couple wheels in the air in the curb. And the, the key was with this car is if I wanted to stay in front, I had to take every apex of every corner. So, yeah, as you can see, there's a Monaro and a couple others behind me. I've got a bit of a gap here. But, yeah, I, I was feeling very confident because I know um, it's one of those tracks where it's stop, start, stop, start, stop, start. So, yeah, braking, handling, not that great. But straight line speed, really good. So I can get that launch out of the corners, especially with all-wheel drive as well. Um, I could use a fair bit of it. So we get into this hairpin that leads you to the back stretch. Now I've got a Monaro right up behind me. There he is. So it, it still seems very close. A couple of guys behind the Monaro. So you just never know what happens here. I'll just take it easy in this corner because, you know, being a trophy truck, it's a big, heavy thing. Um, yeah, you just don't know what's going to happen. This thing's meant for off roading, let's be honest. And it's racing on a track with slick tyres. The Monaro gives me a little nudge. That's fine. Just letting me know that he's there. Fair play, let's be honest. And, you know, the Monaro is a much lighter car than this. And who would have thought that a muscle car would be the one that handles better? But, that's the thing using a trophy truck. It's a bit useless around the corners. As you can see, the Monaro is right up behind me again. And then, you'll see the proximity arrow get closer. Oh, he's nearly had a crack there, but nah. The straight line speed of this thing has kept me in front. Um, yeah, so you, you had to. With, if you want to win a race in one of these, you've got to hit every single apex um, as fast as possible, but not, you know, too fast. You have to be really confident on the brakes. And as you can see, it's just me and the Monaro battling for the lead now. And he's an Australian as well. As we go into this tight left-hander, just take it as slow as possible, get a good launch, and look at that. I've got a really good launch out of that corner. Got a fair gap on the Monaro there as we go, as we bypass turns three and four of the oval back into here. If, you, if you're going way too hot, you end up in the grass and maybe in the fence. But, and then there's this chicane. I felt I took the first part of the chicane way too fast because the Monaro is right up behind me now. There he is. Any minute he could pounce on me. If I make a mistake, he can capitalise. It's lap three or four here. Get a couple wheels in the air as you do. And the Monaro again is right up behind me. And I mean right up behind me. So I take the inside line. I go a bit wide. So does the Monaro. He was probably going to do that to get the... Um, to, you know, to get around me with the slow in, fast out approach, but look, I think because I went wide, he had nowhere to go, but look, there was no contact there, as I take the inside line for this right hander, he's right up behind me, gives me a little nudge again, that's fine, much lighter car, better handling car, I never thought I'd say that about a muscle car, but as you can see, it is, ha we're going hammer and tong for the lead here, the Ford F-150 trophy truck and a Holden Monaro going at it. The Monaro is right behind me. I spin the wheels and I get the launch again. Very good tune, very good gearing just to get that launch out of the corners. It's really helping me here as we go into this left hand. I'm feeling a lot more com confident here now. I can just take it a little faster, get a get bit more of a gap going. However, we get to this chicane section again. The Monaro right up behind me. He nearly gave me another nudge. That's fine. I went a bit too wide, but actually got a, a, a bit of a decent, decent launch out of there. So it's a last lap. No guarantees I'm going to win this. You just never know if the Monaro is going to make a move here. But I was feeling really confident here. However, the Monaro is still right up behind me. As we go to these tight corners, see the proximity arrow is orange. Every time I break, every time I slow down, he gets a lot closer. But once I see a straight, see you later. So, yeah, you just don't know what's going to happen. 
it looks like we're not going to pull out with anyone that's a lap down. I felt I braked a bit too late, but it was fine. The Monaro was actually pretty close there. I actually take this corner pretty well as well. But the Monaro is still there. Because he can capitalize on a mistake. Because he'll have the better brakes. He'll have the better handling. He'll have the less weight. As we get this tight left hand of the, the Monaro is right behind me. Spin the wheels. Just get on the gas as quick, quickly as I can. And look at that gap I've made on the Monaro. So I don't know if he's throwing the what if he threw the white flag or if I just got a really good launch as you see perfect turn that's always going to do it so we get into this tight chicane and I actually pulled a bit of a gap there and believe it or not the Ford F-150 trophy truck a car that shouldn't be in a track racing game has won a race there you go useless to useful so there you have it um, feel free to use the tune for this car. The tune is called A-Class. The description is called A-Class. I haven't called it A700 like the other tunes because this is actually A-Class 697. However, as you can see, it's still a very good tune. Make sure you use it because if the rumours are true where SUVs, open wheelers are going to be banned from the new class hoppers, then... Find a, find a private lobby to use this. Anyway, it's still a good tune. Make sure if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. And most of all, subscribe for more content. Anyway, this is Jeff here and happy racing. Cheers.